Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the From the Booth podcast. I am Mike, joined by a very familiar and very sexy face in Makana. Uh, thank you for coming back to the channel. One question for you. How are you liking that jersey? I'm, you know, liking it a lot. I think it's uh, it's probably the most valuable one that I own. Yeah, and I see the, I see the jersey wall behind you. So how does it compare to, you know, the signed Lamar jersey, the Reggie Bush, Joe Flacco's, like, legends of the game? How, how does that compare in your mind? Well, it's kind of funny because you look at uh, this Lamar Jackson jersey. You know how I got that? How'd you get I it? won a contest. Baltimore Ravens uh, website, they were doing a contest, and it was you have to predict the outcome of every game of the season or whatever, and I won. There you go. So, trivia god right here. That's, trivia that's all god. you need to know. Trivia god, Makana. Well, uh, we have you um, on deck today to talk about a few topics, one of those being your Baltimore Ravens and their division, the AFC North. Um, we're also going to talk about the shit show that is the Oakland Raiders, excuse me, the Las Vegas Raiders. They're so shit, I couldn't even remember what city they're from. And their quarter, their situation with quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, we're going to talk about DeAndre Hopkins and some landing spots possibly for him. The new Madden is going to be coming out soon and getting some details released. And as avid Madden players, we have to get into that. And then we're going to talk about another surprise topic at the end. But before we get into it, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more videos. If you're on any podcast platforms, make sure to rate five stars and uh, write a review. And uh, are you ready to get right into it, Makana? Yeah, let's do it. All right, Makana. So part of the reason I brought you on today was to talk about the AFC North, um, which is, in my opinion, one of the better divisions in the NFL, at least on paper. You know, you got the Ravens and the Bengals, who have been consistent consistent playoff teams for the last couple of years. I think the Browns, um, not only do they have a really good offseason, but I think they have the ability to be significantly better than they were last year um and you know i think the north is is one of those divisions where it's going to be a dog fight every week you know the steelers they're never an easy win either with mike tomlin and that defense so really quick before we kind of jump into the specifics of it do you want to give me your just quick thoughts about how the afc north is going to shake out this year yeah i'm gonna say that i'm gonna say that the ravens do end up winning the division um i think the bengals are going to finish second I think the Steelers are going to finish third, and I think that the Browns are going to finish fourth. And I think I've said that every year for the last five years. But <laughs> I actually, yeah. I think that once again, I just think that's how it pans out, even though I think the Browns are decent. It's not the 2014, 15, 16 Browns. With the greatest coach of all time, Hugh Jackson? Some would say. Some would say. Some might say, yes. Some might say. Um, but like, they're still not as good as the Steelers, I don't think. Um, even though I'm not a huge Kenny Pickett guy, I think that the Steelers' defense and being coached by Mike Tomlin is a major advantage. And Mike Tomlin, I think, is by far the best coach in the division. Um, I think the other coaches are are actually not amazing. I think Harbaugh's probably the second best, but, like, I mean, I, I don't really have Harbaugh as a top-10 coach. Um, and then I don't think Taylor's a top-10 coach either. So it's just, like, you know, whether or not the Ravens are able to figure it out with Todd Munkin quick enough is they'll win the division. Because if you look at recent years and everybody that's commenting already, that's like, how dare you? How dare you um, choose the Ravens over the Cincinnati Bengals? They keep winning the division. Bro, every time Lamar's healthy to all you people, the Ravens are winning the division and then he gets hurt and then they lose the lead of the division. That's what happens every year. Okay. So if Lamar's yeah. healthy, they're going to be winning the division. All right. And I hate when everyone says, well, the Ravens keep losing the division. No. And to your point, you Who just does? mentioned uh you just mentioned Todd Munkin. I think part of the reason that Lamar's hurt every year is because Greg Roman just runs read option up and down the field every drive. I mean, just even from what I've been hearing from Lamar, from what I've been hearing from the Ravens organization, what I saw from Georgia last year. We know the Ravens are going to want to throw the ball and have a much more vertical passing attack than they've had in years past. So I think not only will that benefit them having added Zay Flowers and having ha added Odo Beckham, but I think that'll benefit Lamar Jackson as in he won't get beat up as much. I mean, he's not taking as many hits consistently. So hopefully, um, obviously, we all hope Lamar can stay healthy. Um, but yeah, let's get into the Ravens for a second, because like I said, they did add a few couple. They did add a couple of receivers um, in the offseason. But what were some of the big uh, losses you think they had in free agency or any positions that they didn't address that they maybe should have? Um, I think the biggest loss was Calais Campbell. 
I think he was he was the leader on the Ravens defense. He was the guy that set the tone on the defensive line in a very young, you know, very young group of guys. I mean, outside of him, it was Matabike, Travis Jones, um, Adafe away, and and Tyus Bowser. I guess Tyus Bowser's a little bit older. He's about like 26 or 27, but like mm -hmm. very young guys. I think he losing him was huge because he was playing Pro Bowl level football and ended up I, I think he made the dumbest decision he could have possibly made because he said he wanted to play a contender and then he went to the Atlanta Falcons. Um I don't I don't understand that. I don't know why I, was I don't like, know what? why the Falcons signed him. That made no sense. Um but yeah. Good for Clay. So I'm rooting for you. Um some people may say Chuck Clark. I thought Chuck Clark sucked. I wanted him gone two years ago. And you guys um, got Kyle Hamilton anyway, so it's not like exactly. it's not like you guys are in a bad position there. Yeah, and Roquan's probably going to call the defense now because um, Chuck Clark had the green dot. But he called. I mean, he called the defense in Chicago for all those years, and then getting yeah. traded. You know, you're not going to call the defense; you get traded in the middle of the season. You know what I mean? So, yeah, like yeah. some people may say Mark Spears was a big loss. I think Mark Spears sucked. Um, again, like I think him coming off of his significant injury, missing a full season, he was slow last year. He wasn't getting interceptions. He was getting burnt consistently. And I know a lot of Ravens fans really like him because he brings energy. But if you're going to go for picks, you have to get some. And he is yeah. not getting them anymore. Yeah. So talking about the Ravens for a second, um, do you think the Ravens are in a position, if they stay healthy and if they're able to, you know, have a full, let's, let's say, let's call it 14, 15 game season from Lamar, um, how do you think that offense is going to look relative to the rest of the league? Do you think that this is a top five offense? Do you think they're talented enough? Do you think like, like give me your thoughts on their offense for a second. I think the offense is going to be great. Um, and I think what's funny is the Ravens had a great offense with Lamar last year. I mean, there were games where they were putting up, I mean, people saw the, uh, the Miami game. They put up an insane amount of points. The defense let them down. Yeah. And, even with Greg Roman, who I hated, I think he sucked. The Ravens were still able to put up points in a lot of games. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 2019, the Ravens were the best offense in the NFL. 2020, with Lamar Jackson, they were still probably a top five offense. 2021, it, it kind of went a little bit downhill because it was just like, okay, Greg Roman, you've called the same play for three yeah. straight years. But – this is absolutely a top five most talented offense. And and a lot of people will hear me say that and be like, they'll just look at wide receiver, running back, tight end, not look at the quarterback and not look at the offensive line. Yeah. Look at what the gave the Eagles success last year. It was offensive line and it was and it was quarterback and and a couple of wide receivers. But the Ravens now, like they were a top five offense with terrible wide receivers. And now mm -hmm. they actually have I, I'm not saying great. I think they have competent, they have startable, yeah, average average wide receiver core um, in the NFL. And then their offensive line is, is nasty and they have Mark yeah. Andrews. Like I think yeah. this offensive line is drastically underrated. And Isaiah Stanley. likely. I mean, I'm not going to count him out either. I know you're a big Isaiah likely fan. So yeah. um, talk about the Ravens. I also really like a lot of the young defensive guys on the Ravens as well. I mean, I know yes. we talked about the loss of Clay's Campbell, but um, who is the guy from Michigan? I'm blinking out. David, is it David? David Ajabo? Ajabo. Yeah. David Ajabo. He's going to be able to come in this year. Um, Kyle Hamilton, I mentioned, I think Marlon Humphrey's still holding it down and then you guys yep. got Roquan in the middle. So I think that, um, that you guys are pretty set there. So the Ravens, I think we all kind of know are a really good team in the NFL, but the team that most people would have, I think winning the North would be the Bengals. Um, and when you said that, I think the Ravens, you think the Ravens would win initially, I didn't believe you, but I'm thinking about it. And to be honest with you, the Bengals got worse this off season. Like they did not get better. And you know, they have a limited amount of time. This is probably the last year that they have before Joe Burrow's going to have to get paid, before Jamar, uh, Jamar Chase going to have to get paid, T. Higgins might have to get paid. Like, they are kind of in win, like, quickly mode because of those contracts impending. Um, so let's talk about the Bengals for a second. The obvious, I think, biggest competitor to the Ravens in the division. In terms of, like, if they can repeat their success, if they can sustain the formula that they've had the last couple of years with, you know, at minimum losing in the AFC championship game, what do you think the, what do you think the end result for the Bengals this year is going to be? Losing in the playoffs. Like, like I don't think they have the recipe to win the Super Bowl. And I made yeah. a, a YouTube short about 
like I don't think the Bengals are going to win because their defense got worse mm -hmm. and their secondary was actually pretty good last year. And I know a lot of people hate on Eli Apple, but he had a lot of good games. Um, yeah. And, you know, they lost him. They lost, you know, one of the better safeties in the NFL, Jesse Bates. They lost um, two. They lost Jesse Bates and Von Bell. They also lost Von Bell. Like they just like, like that's huge. And then there's questions going on with Joe Mixon. Yeah. And he's getting older as a running back and he's getting worse. Like he's not as good as he was two years ago, but he's still a good yeah. player. But like, I mean, I don't necessarily see Jamar Chase getting better. Um, I don't necessarily see Joe Burrow getting better. Um, I think they're just at kind of what you can be with their skill sets. And I think Jamar Chase is a top two, maybe the best receiver in the NFL. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of his game and I know a lot of people. But you say he's him. closer to, he's not he's not totally um he's close to his ceiling. Like he's not gonna get much better than he is right now, is yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. Because I think what he does he does exactly what he does perfectly. Mm -hmm. Incredibly physical, incredibly athletic. And makes a ton of big plays. And, yeah. like, could he develop his route running? Yes. But that's not what he's going to use anyway. Yeah. So like when people talk about, oh, who's the best receiver? Everyone brings up uh, Jettis. Everyone brings up, you know, Devontae. It's like, why isn't Jamar Chase in that conversation? It's because he's not as well-rounded as those guys. Yeah. But who cares? That's yeah. not the offense. <laughs> People, people right. were putting Michael Thomas as the best receiver in the NFL, and what did he do? He ran, he did one thing, ran slant routes. Exactly. That's what. That's damn right. Insane seasons. That's damn right. Um. So yeah, I think the Bengals. I, I do still think that they are going to be a, a playoff team, but I wonder if I'm going to put them in the same tier as teams like the Chiefs and the Eagles and and you know the 49ers and everything like that. People get mad at me, you know. Maybe we'll see you later this week in a video, but I don't think I don't have that same level of faith in the Bills either. So, um. We'll we'll see with them, but kind of wrapping up this divisional preview. Um, you gave us your order in the beginning. Let's talk about the Browns for a second because I think the Browns are every single year. The Browns are what I like to call good on paper. Uh, you look at the Browns roster and you're like, oh, this is a pretty good team. Like this could win, you know, eleven games, ten games, whatever. And then every year they disappoint, with the exception of like 2020 when they won the one playoff game against Pittsburgh. Take me through what it's like to be able to just beat up on the Browns twice a year every year and kind of what you think they're going to look like this year with a Deshaun Watson, who has now had a whole off season. He's going to have had a preseason. He's going to have been in, in Cleveland for a year. Do you see a dramatic improvement with Deshaun Watson and the, in the Browns? Uh, talk me through that. Yeah. I mean, like, I think the Browns, everyone kind of misconstrues them because they're no longer, again, that team from, you know, 2016, 2017 um, that sucked. And it's like they're they're a decent football team. The problem is they play in a really tough division, and they just have never had the coaching that can you know kind of elevate them. They yeah. just rely on their star players, and they have some good ones. You know Denzel Ward, Miles Garrett, Nick Chubb. Um, obviously now they have Deshaun Watson, and I think Deshaun Watson's going to be good this year. They added some wide receivers, um, so they're not going to be you know incompetent at the wide receiver position, but like. Really, what they try and do is they try and run the football with Nick Chubb. Yeah. Control the clock and went on defense. But they haven't had a good enough defense to where that works. Mm -mm. People, and, people get it confused. And I because... found out this offseason, Nick Chubb is drastically overrated. I'm sorry. I oh. saw your I saw your tier list rankings. I saw them. Oh. Um, drastically hot overrated. Take. Not a hot take. Bro, I see 30% of the lists I see have him as the best running back in the NFL. And that means I mean, the 30% efficiency of stats people. are pretty good, McConnell. The efficiency stats are pretty good. Shut the fuck up. Okay. Shut That's all up. I'm going to say. All right. Any, any, any counter say. argument? Yeah, my counter argument is shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, okay. Here's my counter argument. There is no way that he is a better player than Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry is better at everything than Nick Chubb. He is a better interior runner. He's a better outside runner. He is difficult, more difficult to bring down. He can hit the home run just as well. And neither of them are good pass catchers. But which one of them has the most dominant play in the history of the NFL? Derrick Henry. The Derrick Henry screen pass is the most unstoppable play. The okay. 
I just want to say, ever seen. I just want to say, I hate that that you know you're disagreeing with me, but when you said that, I thought of that 99 yard touchdown. The fact that we had different plays kind of proves your point a little bit there. I'm not oh, gonna lie. When I say unstoppable play, I mean like repeatable play call. Oh, um, oh. When you like, said unstoppable I, play, I was thinking the 99 yarder he had against uh, the Jaguars, and I was just yes, like, the 99 yarder breaks yeah. like seven or eight tackles on there, but like they don't throw it to him very often. But when they do, it is a screen pass. And nobody's expecting it, and it's not running routes. A lock for forty yards every time. Yeah, he's not running routes. He just he just kind of hang out in the backfield, and then Tannehill just flip him the ball, and then then another running back, Christian McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey is not as good of a runner as Nick Chubb. I'm not going to say that, but Christian McCaffrey is a top five runner in the NFL. I think everybody looks at him, and you know why they look at him and they don't think he's a very good runner. They 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 legitimately they look at him and they say he's white, and anytime. Anytime you look at a football player and he is a white running back, what do you think? This is a pass catching, scat pretty. Back. He plays the game the right way. Sneaky That athletic. is what everybody thinks. Yeah. That is not Christian McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey is a downhill between the tackles runner. He is not an outside runner. He, that is how they ran him at Stanford. That is how they ran him in Carolina. That is how they run him in San Francisco is they run him up the middle because he's a great interior runner. And he's then got you great vision, I will say. He's got great vision. Then you Excellent. add in the fact that he – is the best pass-catching running back maybe the NFL has ever seen. He is a phenomenal route runner. Many people say that he would easily be a Pro Bowl wide receiver in the slot position. His father was a Hall of Fame wide receiver for the Denver Broncos. And Christian McCaffrey consistently goes out there and gives you 150 yards every single game. Every game, he gives you 150 yards. You can run an entire offense through Christian McCaffrey. There is no other player in the NFL that you can do that for yeah. at any position other yeah. than quarterback. Is You can run an offense through him and not just run an offense, run an efficient, good offense. When he was playing with Sam Darnold in Carolina, they were undefeated before he was injured. And not only were they undefeated, they were a very good offense. And then right when Christian McCaffrey goes down, Everyone went, oh, they'll be okay. You know, Christian McCaffrey's great. And they proceeded to have one of the worst offenses the NFL has ever seen right after they lost him. Yeah. Christian McCaffrey, for some reason, is drastically, drastically underrated. And yeah. people talk about Nick Chubb as if he's ever been the best running back in the NFL, which he hasn't. He's never even led the league in rushing yards. Why? Because Derrick Henry beats him with a worse offensive line. And worst passing game every year. Yeah. Look at, look at like 2019, 2020 Nick Chubb. It was like he was putting up like 1,500 yards with maybe that people were talking about that offensive line is maybe the best in the NFL. Gotta also then, remember though, he's splitting carries with Kareem Hunt. I mean, Derrick Henry never had a, a running back to split carries with. I mean, it's just been because he fun. doesn't need one. That's the thing. Well, I don't even think it's it's need. I think it's this the philosophy of Kevin Stefanski. Kevin Stefanski's always kind of done that split running back stuff he tries to go split running back but even before they had kareem hunt even before they had him nick chubb was getting all the carries and he still wasn't out rushing derrick henry who had a bad rookie year nick chubb yeah had a bad offensive line derrick henry's never had a good offensive line i don't know i think those peak years of taylor lamont and jack conklin were pretty good and ben jones average that's that's pretty good average above average nick chubb had elite offensive lines Consistently. I don't want to penalize him for having really good offensive lines. I mean. No, he had really good offensive lines and wasn't putting up as good of numbers. And I've seen, I mean, I, I put Nick Chubb, I believe I put him sixth in my running back rankings. There, there are easily five running backs I would take for this season. All over right, Nick top Chubb. five running backs, go. If I was in the top five running backs, I would go McCaffrey. Derek, you already said Derrick Henry and CMC. Okay, cool. McCaffrey, three. Henry, Jonathan Taylor. Okay. Um, let's see here. Am I blanking on all my running backs? Um, I would I would take Brees Hall over him right now. I would take okay. People gave me shit because I put Brees Hall on top tier, and they're like, "You can't do that." And I'm like, "Yes, I can." He's he's him. He's nice. And Seahawks fans got mad at me because I put Brees Hall ahead of Kenneth Walker, and I'm like, "Do you guys watch f- football? Did you see Kenneth Walker miss every block on third down and never catch a pass?" And I love Kenneth Walker, but damn, there's a reason the Seahawks drafted Jack, Zach Charbonnet. All right, let's 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 believe that. There's a reason they drafted Zach Charbonnet to do what Kenneth Walker doesn't do. And then let's see here. I literally made a top six ranking, and I can't think of what it was. 
Um, That's funny that you were just so, so hesitant. No, I, I was. And I'm trying to go back in my head and go to my top six. I would take Saquon. Okay. Um, that's five. Um, yeah. I would also take Bijan easily. Well, I, I he hasn't Bijan played. Has played a snap yet. That's why. That's why I said Nick Chubb was six. But yeah, it was Saquon. Are you taking Josh Jacobs ahead of Nick Chubb? No. Fuck no. Are you taking Etn? No. Najee. Yeah, dude. I'm I would take Najee, but like, I'm not gonna put him over him because I think that's way too hot of a take. That is way um, too hot of a take. But like, I would. But I'm yeah. I'm giving Nick Chubb the benefit of the doubt playing longer. Well, damn, dude. I mean. You, uh, uh, okay, I take back the Nick Chubb's most overrated player. Josh Jacobs' most overrated player. Then it's Nick Chubb. That, that's that's my statement. Okay, okay, word. Well, well, and we just did a surprise segment of you roasting my uh, running back tier list, so we'll we'll keep that in there, I guess. But oh, there's probably um, more to roast about it. There is. All right, and then really quick, ending with the Steelers. Um, what are your thoughts on the Steelers? I think they're definitely the most boring team in the division, but in my opinion, they're they're always just solid. Like they're always just going to be well coached. They're going to play good defense. They're never going to be an easy win. Um, but how do you kind of view the Steelers relative to the division? Yeah, beating T.J. Watt is very difficult, and it's yes. it's probably the only team in the NFL where you go up against them, and it's about beating the defense. Mm-hmm. But that's what they are. You have to beat T.J. Watt. He is a game wrecker, and Mike Tomlin is going to coach that offense to be good enough to allow the defense to win the games. Like that's what they do. They win nine games every year. Yeah, I think though now with um with you guys getting rid of Greg Roman, I think they definitely have the worst offensive coordinator in the division. Um, so that is honestly, I'm gonna say is Matt Canada may be worse than Greg Roman. <laughs> yeah, honestly, he he might have been already. I mean, he he's in contention for like worst OC in the league, in my opinion. Um, in the in in professional sports history, he's the worst coach. No, um, but. They did improve a lot. They improved the trenches, which to me is a very dangerous thing for the Steelers. So we'll see where they go. But you have them getting third in the division. I'm pretty sure that's talent-wise, they might be fourth. But I think Tomlin, again, does give them a little bit of an edge. TJ Watt does give them a little bit of an edge to maybe uh, compete a little bit more. But I don't see them as a playoff team or like maybe a serious playoff team. They might be like a seven seed or something. But I don't necessarily see them as a team that's going to like go out and win a playoff game and you know compete for a Super Bowl realistically. But yeah. we'll see. So that's kind of the preview of the AFC North. Thank you, Makana, for coming to join, and um, I hope that your Baltimore Ravens do well, and I hope that I can see you in – where's the Super Bowl this year? Where's the Super Bowl head, uh, headed this year? Ooh. It's a, it's a great – It's not San Francisco. No, New Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans. It is New Orleans. So I hope to see uh, the Ravens and the Seahawks in New Orleans this year, going against each other <laughs> in February. Okay, so I, – I, I didn't know the Seahawks were playing the Saints this year. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just going to leave in that, that pause of awkward silence. All right, so, Makana, me and you over the years, we've played a lot of Madden together. And while I don't have the overall win-loss record in front of me, uh, probably not great in my favor. You kind of you kind of whoop my ass a few times. But um, as Madden fans, as NFL fans, as fans of everything, you know, People kind of know in the football community that that uh, Madden's been kind of kind of going into the shitter lately. You know, it's been it's been on a steady decline um, for many years now, and I would say that it's at the point of people are calling for EA to stop making the Madden games. But the new Madden game, Madden Twenty Four, is going to be at least with EA because the of the. Uh, the rights agreement with the NFL Players Association. So Madden 24 is still in the hands of EA Sports, unfortunately. And there's a few updates that we have to talk about. And there's a few things that I think we should talk about in terms of a wish list, in terms of what we want to see with Madden. So it's been reported this week that the cover athlete is going to be coming out soon. Um, I've heard what the supposed leaked cover, cover athlete would be, but I wanted to hear your thoughts on who you would have as the cover athlete really quick. Um, I mean, I haven't heard any leaks or anything like that. My expected cover athlete would probably be Tom Brady, uh, because he's retiring. Um, or he, maybe he's been a he cover athlete a twice legend. in the last five years, though. <laughs> yeah, I know, and it's kind of stupid. I think cover athletes pretty dumb. Um, because now they don't sell the cover like they sell them, but like it's not really encouraged. They kind of want people to buy the digital version. Yeah, but I mean, like cover athlete, I think it'd be it, it'll probably be someone like Joe Burrow or, or Josh Allen. Um, mm-hmm. 
you know, high profile quarterback, but I don't know. I'm, I've never been big into cover athlete, mostly because people talk about it way too much as the cover athlete curse, which doesn't really exist anymore. I literally Tony just Ryan made a video stuff, on that. I literally just it. made a video about how the curse doesn't exist anymore. So great that we think alike, but yeah, I personally, I would have loved to see like, I'm maybe switch, be brave and not do a quarterback every year. And like Justin Jefferson, I mean, in terms of like what he's brought to the NFL, both from his play and like the dance, the gritty, like, I feel like he's kind of, uh, brought a lot of cool things in the NFL, but I have heard that the leak cover athlete will be Josh Allen. So you were right. Um, oh, really? guess. Yeah, that's that's who I've heard the leak is. Shocker. Now, how reputable the leak is, I don't know. Don't sue me, but I mean, it makes sense. It's nothing out of the blue. But um, so a few big changes are coming to Madden this year, apparently, and we've been hearing this for years. So I'll believe it when I see it. They're going to make big improvements to franchise mode. They're going to focus a lot more on the offline component of Madden, making the experience better for non-ultimate team players um and the big improvement that has been guaranteed by ea is that it's going to be cross-platform so now you're going to be able to play xbox uh you're going to be able to play connect with next gen and old gen so it's not backwards compatible necessarily but it's it's compatible with your whatever gen you're on um so that's going to be great but i mean if you and we've talked about this we've had hour-long conversations about this but if you had to briefly in 30 40 seconds describe what you would change about madden other than clint olenberg um, what would you change about the game overall to make it better? Um, I would get them to stop, just stop trying to make it more fun for everybody because I think they're trying to make it easy to learn and easy to play initially, which screws over anybody that's trying to play anything competitive or trying to play. Not, I mean, we're not competitive players, but we are, pr- I would say we're pretty good Madden players. Yeah. Like I've yeah. been, I've been top 100 multiple times. Um, like I, I play the game a lot when I'm enjoying it and I feel like I get burnt out because the game becomes so easy that they make it so everyone can do it. Everyone can just go out there with their abilities and do whatever they want, um, you know, and just run the exact same offense because everyone runs the exact same thing. Um, I think that's one of the biggest problems. The other thing is, you know, we play ultimate team. That's how Madden makes most of their money is ultimate team. Um, Go back to what you were doing when speed wasn't the only thing that mattered because they used to have, I want to say it was Madden 18 was the last time they did this cards on release day would have 95, 90 Brashad Perriman. I want to say had 98 or 97 speed one year. Dre Archer, I think had 96. Oh yeah. Um, maybe he's Madden 17. Then throughout the year, you would get cards. You'd be like 96 speeds. So then you were debating, okay, much more like the NFL. Do I want that? The 97 speed, not good route running, you know, player, or do I want to go for the, you know, what team of the week or, you know, whatever, you know, Thanksgiving Tyree Hill, who has maybe like 95 speed, but very good route running, very good hands. And so it became much more similar to the NFL where it's like, okay, you can have crazy speed guys, but they're not that good. They make yeah. every single player play the exact same way in Madden Ultimate Team. And it doesn't matter who you are. Derek Henry anytime will get like you get the a same stat, speed as Chris McCaffrey. Anytime you get a stat, the first thing you look at is the speed. That's the only thing I look at. I'm like, does he have 98 speed, 99 speed? They all speed? play the same. Yeah, they all play the same. So it's it's getting kind of ridiculous. But, um, yeah, I can't say – I'm honestly I, – I can't say I'm very excited for Madden this year. I'm normally – obviously, I've, I've gotten Madden consistently for, like, 12 years now. And I'm almost getting, like, burnt out of it where I'm just, like – I mean, last year I didn't get it on opening day. Like, I, that's always the thing I did. And I just – I don't know. I'm just – I'm kind of done with Madden. I'm kind of done with EA at having Madden. They just consistently have just been so bad for so many years. I'm just waiting for something new. Something, I'm waiting for some other company to start making Madden. I know ESPN uh, 2K is going to make um, their version of the NFL game uh, in a few years if, they, if they're able to get the deal done. So I'm waiting for that. I'm waiting for NCAA. I mean, if they, if they screw over NCAA, I, I don't even know what to say at this point. I mean, the other that, thing Madden cares about is shit that doesn't matter. Yeah, bro, get rid of the fucking yard. That shit's yeah. ass. Nobody plays the yard. Dude. Like, like, they, like they, like they focus on these things. They come out with it, and then they're like, "All right, we're gonna do nothing with it." And the reason why they have the yard is for marketing, because then they go, "Travis Scott is in the game," and then yeah. he's in the yard, or Snoop Dogg's in the game, or SpongeBob's in the game, and they do that. And it's like, okay, they're just incentivizing the people that don't play Madden to try and play Madden when instead they should focus on the people that already play. Because uh-huh. those are the people dropping thousands of dollars on uh-huh. Ultimate Team, on cosmetics, all those things. Those are the people that play. Cater to them. 
don't cater to the nine year old because they think that they're going to try and play the yard and play as SpongeBob. Nobody cares. Yeah. Like they come out with these modes where it's like cool, right? Remember when DraftKings got dropped? Yeah. Or not DraftKings, Draft Champs. Draft, Draft Champs. Cha- yeah. Dra- not sponsored. Not uh, sponsored yet. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's funny. When hit, you said DraftKings, right I literally up. knew what you were talking about. And I just forgot what it was called. Like, they That's came our out point. We forgot what it was called. <laughs> and it was like, and you had to pay to enter. You would get, you you could get good rewards. You'd go six to no. Um, and it was like, you got good rewards and it was worthwhile. Yeah. Then they started reducing the rewards. And I was like, like you barely break even going six and oh, but whatever. It's still an enjoyable mode. And then they were like, all right, we're never going to update this throughout the year. And it was like, okay, I mean, I don't want to play this in December and have to play with the same 84 overall base cards. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, they used to have elite cards being 84 plus or 83 plus. Now they're 80 plus. And so way too many cards are elites. Another debate, but um, they never update it. And then they were like, all right, we're going to make it free. And the rewards are just non-existent. And it was like, dude, what are you doing? Nobody cares about this mode anymore. It was no. such a great idea. No. And draft if champion. anybody plays 2K, they were they were like, put in a draft mode. We want something like Madden has. And they were just, please, please, please. Then they kind of did it. It kind of sucked. But it was like, they were trying to emulate what Madden was doing. Because Madden came out with a great idea. Then they just got rid of it completely because they didn't want to update it consistently. And instead, they would rather focus on the yard. Which, to be honest, no real Madden player is sitting and playing the yard. And then they have, like, those franchise story modes. Bro, nobody Based cares. Based the franchise sucks. Like, it, sucks. it just, like, like, if you make it good, yeah. But they're just putting way too much time into all these things that most people do not play to try and market their game better. So then they can tell corporate, oh, yeah, we just spent money on this marketing. Dude, don't spend money on marketing. You're Madden. Yeah. You're fucking Madden. Yeah. You should not need marketing for people to be like, I want to play a football game. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, as you can probably tell, we're both not too happy with Madden right now. Um, obviously, hopefully the new one's better. They've said, and they've been saying for years that they're going to improve it, but I just also, don't abilities see it. suck. Yeah. I just don't see it. So that's going to be our, our segment on Madden there. All right. Speaking of things that suck and are terrible, um, Jimmy Garoppolo is... Uh, yeah, yeah, I said it. Jimmy Garoppolo sucks. Um, by his real name, porn star Jimmy. Porn star, you're right. Porn star Jimmy. So porn star Jimmy, um, he's in a bit of a pickle at the moment, and the Raiders are in a bit of a pickle as well because they signed Jimmy Garoppolo to this three year, sixty six, sixty seven million dollar contract, which in and of itself was dumb. But add on to add on to the fact that apparently. Due to recent reports we have now seen, Jimmy Garoppolo's foot apparently isn't fully healed from the broken um, foot that happened last year against the Miami Dolphins. And there is apparently a clause in his contract that says that if he does not pass a physical by a certain date, that he can be waived with no expense to the Raiders. Um, The problem lies for both Jimmy and the Raiders in the fact that Jimmy would lose a job and the Raiders would not have a quarterback. So, um... Makana, do you want to just kind of talk about the dysfunction of the Raiders and their quarterback situation and, and everything kind of going on with that? Yeah, the Raiders are a franchise that ever since they had competency have been just ridiculously bad. And by competency, I mean early 2000s uh, when they were good. Yeah. And, you know, I don't want to mention, you know, who was coaching back then, but they were good back then. Yeah. And – Overall, they've just kind of spiraled downhill. Management's been bad. Coaching's been bad. Um, I mean, they've gotten rid of any good player. I, I know that you're pretty happy that you got Mr. Khalil Mack out of the, the Raiders a little bit ago. But, like, yeah. they just don't do anything that makes sense. They draft horribly. They don't develop their players. And then they hold on to players that doesn't make sense to hold on to. I talked about it earlier. I don't think Josh Jacobs is very good. Um I wouldn't want Josh Jacobs on my team. And then they're probably, they're paying him. They're going to pay him a lot of money um, yeah. to be, I don't, I don't even necessarily think of him as an elite running back. Right. And he's getting a lot of money. So it's just like, one, what are you doing from that stance? The other thing is like, they have Devonte Adams and they decide to get a quarterback that cannot play to his set. Like, first off the Jimmy Garoppolo move just made no sense. 
Yeah, um, no, I just did. Devontae Adams excels at routes outside the numbers. Those corner routes, those out routes, those deep fakes. Jimmy G can't things. make those throws. Those are the exact throws that Jimmy G doesn't make. No. is everything that Devontae Adams is great at. You know what Jimmy can throw? He can throw a four-yard check down. He's great at those. He can they throw draft a after Michael Mayer, great pick for Jimmy Garoppolo. No, exactly. Michael Mayer was a fantastic pick. The other thing with Devontae Adams, bro, the quarterback you had, Derek Carr, and I don't think he's great. I think he's maybe a little bit overrated. He's fine. Not only that, he had elite chemistry with Devontae Adams. They were college roommates. I mean, they were they were besties. They were they were yeah. tight. You know what I mean? Um, so I just think that that whole shit show at quarterback for the Raiders is it's just not it's sad and it's it's a terrible example, but it's also a perfect reflection of what they've been as a franchise. You said since the early two thousands. I would say about the same time. I would say ever since Al Davis died, they uh, they've just been they've just been not the Raiders. They've been the Mark Davis led Raiders have not been the once proud elite historic NFL franchise. They've been incompetent. They've been terrible. They've had obviously the highest amount of players arrested. They've made terrible coaching decisions, terrible GM decisions. They lucked out at quarterback taking Derek Carr, who was there for what six ish years. Yeah. Um, but they just been they've just been an atrocious franchise, and I honestly think that their best strategy at this point is just to tank this year and say, Caleb Williams, welcome to Las Vegas. But I just don't know if they're bad enough. I don't know if they're number one pick bad enough, honestly. I mean, if they're going to start Brian Hoyer or Aiden O'Connell, possibly. But I mean, what do you think I, about I don't them know going after do. somebody else, trading yeah. for one of these young quarterbacks that hasn't worked out. Yeah, they could Zach trade. I mean, Trey Lance. Yeah, Trey Lance. Yeah, does, those guys I mean, are not off what, the What about Mac Jones? Mac, Well, Mac Jones, I mean, would definitely make sense because of McDaniel. I mean, McDaniel yeah. was there in New England and stuff. And you know, I mean, he signed Brian Horror because of all his years in New England. So Mac Jones would not surprise me. But then again, if you get Mac Jones, you're just mediocre at best. Like, you're not good. You're not anywhere near the Chargers or, or the, the Chiefs. And then if Sean Payton works out in Denver, you're not anywhere near the Broncos. So... I just think it's it's a terrible, terrible time to be a Raiders fan. And I'm very sorry for all you drunk Las Vegas residents that have to watch them play. Um, just a terrible There's a reason they're drunk. Yeah, there's a reason they're drunk. They got to watch Jimmy Garoppolo and his broken foot every week. I mean, can you imagine being like a Raiders fan and like being so excited to get a new quarterback and then your team go out and sign Jimmy Garoppolo for $67 million? Dude, all you're hearing about all offseason is Lamar – Aaron yeah, Rogers. Jalen Hurts like, got a new contract. All like, everyone's kind of going crazy, and then it's just like, oh, we got Jimmy. Even yeah, I, I don't yeah, and then there was even I think people that were gonna say that the Raiders could trade her from seven to four or five. Yeah, it could have been some people were thinking, thinking Stroud. Yeah, um, Anthony Richardson. I remember that stretch of time when when Stroud was falling because of the 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 test, whatever test it was. They were saying, oh, Stroud to seven to the Raiders, and I was like, that would be. A bless that would be a gift from God if CJ Stroud fell all the way to number seven for the Raiders, and none of absolutely none of that happened, and it was just Jimmy G. And now it might not even be Jimmy G. So, um, bad time to be a Raiders fan, and Raiders fans will keep you guys in our prayers. All right, let's talk about DeAndre Hopkins and where he might be going. I have a team that I think makes perfect sense for DeAndre Hopkins. The speculation is going to start. Um, but first of all, I want to ask you, Makana, before I ask you what team he might be headed to, I want to ask you, is there a possibility, do you think, that DeAndre Hopkins got released and like a Odell Beckham, like a Des Bryant back in the day, he just goes unsigned for a long period of time? Do you think that we might not see DeAndre Hopkins on a team week one? Is that a possibility? I don't think that's a possibility. I think he's too good um, to not be on a roster. Like, I think Odell wasn't on a team because he had a major injury. Yeah. And Dez also had a major injury. I want to say he tore his ACL in New Orleans um, in training camp or something when yeah. he got signed to that. Yeah. It, was, it was something weird. Um, and it was like, those guys were out of their prime. Yeah. Nuck is still a top 10 wide receiver in the NFL. And many teams reportedly wanted – people were trying to trade for him. Yeah. Um, and so it's just like which what, I'm surprised what, the he, Cardinals released him. I'm not. They're tanking for Caleb. I mean, they're so Josh Rosening, Kyler Murray. 
I mean, you might as well get some some draft cap. I was like, even if it's for like a sixth, I think teams just didn't want to take his contract, to be honest. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And which is funny because I talked about that on TTP Ravens Media being like, guys, the Ravens aren't trading for him because they would need to trade like a first round pick to get the Cardinals to maintain the entire contract. And they're not going to trade a first round no. pick for DeAndre Hopkins. No. He's not worth it. No. Um, so what team, if you had to, if you had to bet some money, I know you, I know you like to gamble here and there, and we'll, we'll get into that later on um, in some videos. Once I'm 21, you got to wait about three months. I don't want the feds knocking on my door. Um, but if you were a gamble, if you were to gamble on this, what team would you put a little money to sign DeAndre Hopkins? I've already talked about him. Cleveland. I think. I think. I think the same thing. Them. I think they need a receiver. Yep. They got money. Yeah. How much money? I know. Um, I saw yesterday. Uh, each team's salary cap got tweeted. I'm gonna look at what the Browns' cap number is. Honestly, as long as it's over 15, 16 million, I think the Browns would be totally okay to do that. Like, I think that they would have no problem as long as, obviously, they're financially able to do so. Um, okay, got it right here. The Cleveland Browns have – if I could read faster. They have – oh, they only have about $13.86 million. So that would be yeah, a little – You can do it with void years. Yeah, you can do guarantees. You can do signing bonus. You can do all sorts of shit. Um, but I think Cleveland makes a lot the of Bears? sense. No. No. You don't think so? Um, here's the thing, really? the Bears, the Bears prior to are prioritizing young players, A, B, um, they just traded in part, you know, the first overall pick for DJ Moore. They traded a first rounder basically for Chase Claypool. They drafted Tyler Scott. I don't know if they're going to put that many more resources into DeAndre Hopkins. Plus D hop said he wants to play on a team. That's a super bowl contender. The bears aren't a good D line. The bears don't have it. Um, the bears just don't work for a lot of reasons, to be honest. Um, but I think Cleveland, I, I agree with you. I think Cleveland makes a lot of sense. Deshaun Watson is going to petition for him, obviously. They had their best years together in Houston. Um, Cleveland right now doesn't really have a, like, definite wide receiver one. I mean, I think Cedric Maybe Tillman Coop. could be. What? Coop. Coop is good, but Coop he's to me definite is. definite wide receiver one there. Well, he's, okay, I don't know. I don't love Amari Cooper as much as some people do, and I'm going to be real. I think he's a great two, but I don't know if he's like a really – he's definitely their one right now. He's not know. a one right now, but he's their one right now. Right, that's what I'm saying. He's yeah. their one, but he's not like a one. But D-Hop, mm -hmm. I mean, they would be, they would be you know, two ones yeah. basically. Um, and I think Cleveland, you know, they definitely are thin at wide receiver, I would say. I mean, who's their two after Amari Cooper? Probably Cedric Tillman. DPJ. Yeah, and Donovan Peoples Jones has been very inconsistent over the years. I mean, he's not he's not exactly been a solid, you know, option every week. Um, but I think that makes sense. I think the Browns would do it. I think they want to add they want to add talent. Um, teams in their division have gotten better, like the Steelers, like the Ravens. So I think that I think the Browns would be a, a great fit. I could also see a team like the Bills. Um the Bills to me make a lot of sense as well. They'd probably be my number. Bills have one million in cap space. Yeah, never mind. Okay. Um, Cowboys have twenty million. Cowboys make sense, although they did just trade for Brandon Cooks. So I'm thinking, how many veteran, how many old guy veteran receivers do you want to have? But D Hop's game is not predicated on his speed, so I don't yeah. think the decline will be as sharp as some other guys might be. Um, the but Colts I guess we'll have twenty three million. He doesn't want to go to the Colts. They're not a contender. Uh, Anthony Richardson is actually such a good quarterback. He is. No, he Anthony Richardson's the truth. Okay. Anthony Richardson. Hey, Mike, I was told by somebody that Anthony Richardson on day one is a better thrower of the football than Justin Fields. Um so shout out to Maddox for that take. Y'all let me now know. all of a sudden Maddox has him top ten. Wait, Maddox said that Anthony Richardson was better than Justin Fields, but he has Justin Fields as a top ten quarterback. Now he does. Now he has Justin Fields in the top 10, but before the draft, he was saying Anthony Richardson, better thrower, better runner than Justin Fields. And he thought Justin Fields was very overrated, and now he's top 10. Man. 
Man, all right, I'm not even gonna. I guess I'm very gonna... good at convincing people. I Maddox know. is that Maddox is that Shaq meme, and it just says, "I'm I'm sorry, I apologize. I wasn't familiar with your game." That's just Maddox with every NFL player. That's just what he is with with everybody, dude. Um, but anyway, so if you had to pick another team other than Cleveland to for DeAndre Hopkins to land to, what would you say? You said the Cowboys. Yeah, I would say the Cowboys would probably be my pick. Or like, I mean, I don't think he'd go to the Jets. They have the money. Maybe the Lions. The Lions have the money. That's true. Cowboys, they Lions. do have a good. They, I mean, I think they're a little overrated, but teams do. Uh, I think they 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 think they're contenders as well. So, whatever that is. Um, yeah. But yeah, Jaguars. so. Yeah, I think they have too many receivers. Kirk, Zay Jones, and Calvin Ridley now coming in. Bro, you did years. not just fucking say Zay Jones is going to hold them. No, back no, 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 no. I'm not DeAndre saying. I'm not saying. Hopkins. Well, we got Zay Jones. I'm not saying Zay Jones is better. <laughs> I'm not saying Zay Jones is better. I'm saying that <laughs> I think that they don't want to address receiver because of those three guys. But no, DeAndre Hopkins is definitely better than Zay Jones. I'm not saying otherwise. But again, Calvin Ridley and Christian Kirk are two legit wide receivers, I think. Um, but that is what it is. So that's kind of all there is to say about DeAndre Hopkins, in my opinion. All right. So for our last segment of today, we're going to talk about the NBA finals. It's going on right now between the Heat and the Nuggets. My boy, Jimmy Buckets, um, he's going crazy. My favorite basketball player of all time, because he did the one thing that I've always strived to do in my life. And that is go on a date with Chicago. What? What did you say? I said, leave Chicago. Well, I mean, (laughs) Two for two, I guess. Anyway, um, the NBA. We're going to talk about the NBA. We're going to make a little video talking about comparing the NBA and the NFL. Um, and we're going to talk about some things that the NFL can learn from the NBA. Um, so me and McConaughey, we brainstormed a list. Mostly McConaughey because he's the NBA guy. Um, I just watch the Bulls lose a game, and then I don't watch basketball until the playoffs. Um, but let's talk about some things that the NBA um, does better than the NFL. First of all, we talked about the draft lottery. Now, I've... I've kind of debated the idea of a draft lottery in the NFL before, but the more that I think about it, I think the more that I like it, the more that I think this would eliminate tanking, this would um, eliminate, you know, a lot of the bullshit that goes on trying to get the first guy, trying to get better draft picks. And I think it would also make the draft more of a spectacle. I think the NFL draft is already the biggest spectacle of any sports draft in the, in the world, but I think it would make it that much better. So what do you think would be the, pros and cons of an NFL draft lottery to determine the draft order every year. Yeah, I think I think the the biggest pro is the lottery gets rid of tanking. Not gets rid of, but it helps to reduce tanking. And in the NBA, the reason why they have to do that is because the first overall pick is so much better than everybody else most years. Like, right? Like imagine yeah. if there wasn't a, a draft lottery and you had Victor Wembanyama um just as a player right that would be like you know if you're comparing it to the nfl it would be like you have andrew luck going in the draft and then the next best player in the draft is anthony richardson (laughs) and you're like like that's how big the gap would be and so everyone would be like all in here's a here's a great example here's a great example the gap is joe burrow or chase young i mean who would you rather have well i mean like you look at it now and it's like joe burrow or Justin Herbert. Yeah. But I'm saying that was that, that, yeah. that was the top two of that draft. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. at the time yeah, that's yeah. What everybody had top two. Whereas like everyone wanted Burrow. Everyone wanted yeah. Trevor Lawrence, right? Trevor Lawrence or Zach Wilson. Exactly. No, perfect. Perfect, like, dude. Everyone wanted that number one overall pick. And this last year, I think it was very clear the number one overall pick was not nearly as valuable. I mean, we saw the Texans win a game at the end of the year. Um, shout out to the Texans for doing that to help the Chicago Bears. But Appreciate like, y'all for real. How much better was Bryce Young than CJ Stroud? Now, I, I I have no problem with anybody that says Bryce Young's better. I personally had CJ Stroud as my number one, but you know, pretty pretty close. I mean, I there was say. a reason there was a debate up until draft day about who the number one overall pick was going to be. I mean, there was a lot of people that had yeah. CJ Stroud, you know, like that. So, um, but do you think that in the case of a draft lottery, right? So we take the the NBA does it. All the teams that are, are don't make the playoffs. Don't make the playoffs, yeah. Yeah, would be going, going the lottery. So do you think, let's just say a disaster scenario, like a team like the, the Steelers, right, or the Jets, who were 
mediocre throughout the whole year. God forbid they they win the draft lottery. Do you think that that is just an unfair advantage to have this mediocre team get this giant asset? Or how do you think that that shapes up? I, I do think it's unfair. I, I just like, like, I wouldn't be pro draft lottery in the NFL just because um, getting that number one overall pick in the NFL, right, if you have Patrick Mahomes, if you have, you know, one of these guys and you still got the number one overall pick, yeah, you would just be able to trade him, like, because think about it. Patrick Mahomes gets injured this year. Chiefs, Chiefs probably are aren't making the playoffs. Yeah, they win the lottery. Oh, they get Caleb Williams, and they just trade him for an absurd amount of assets. They're set for years. Like it's yeah. just like it just wouldn't be worth it because there's too many players, right? Like, let's say you already have maybe the number one player. Um, I thought the best player in last year's draft was Will Anderson, right? Let's say yeah. he was he was the consensus number one, right? And you're a team. You're the Pittsburgh Steelers. You have T.J. Watt. You already have the best edge rusher in the NFL. Yeah. You could still draft Will Anderson, and then you would just be stupid overpowered. Mm. Every position outside of quarterback, you need more than one. Yeah. So it's yeah. like you would just automatically like – your team would just become stupid good. Um, and I think other teams – like we already see teams struggle to rebuild, like drastically struggle because they can't get a quarterback. If you go 0-16 and you can't draft a new quarterback, now 0-17. Yeah. It would be what like okay. Brutal. Um, I saw the results of the draft lottery. I know San Antonio won. What team record wise was the worst in the NBA this year? Uh, I believe it was the Detroit Pistons. And I and think don't they have they like the, the third pick? pick. They have, the, they have fifth the pick. They have the fifth pick. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh my oh, god. Hold on. I gotta I gotta look it up. I think it was the Pistons were the worst. My point is, my point is, is that if you're the worst team in the league, you should get help to get one of the best players in the in the in the draft. So that would be my only objection to where it's like, hey, these really really struggling teams need to be able to get some. They need they need some luck. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, the Browns, the Browns every year back then were bad, and they were getting the first overall pick. And it was their fault that they fucked it up. Like, if they picked the wrong guy, that's their fault. The league yeah. gave them an opportunity to pick one of the best players, and they if they fumbled, that's their fault, right? Um, I think the bust percentage in the NBA is a lot lower than in the NFL. Like, yeah. Because in the NBA, it's – like, there's busts, but almost every year it's like, okay, this guy's the one. He's going to come in. He's going to be really good. Yeah. Um, like, maybe he gets hurt his rookie year. Like, like Chet Holmgren, he got hurt his rookie year. That's fine. But, yeah. like, in the NFL – I mean, you can take Zach Wilson too. People were excited about that pick. Completely horrible. No, yeah, just unplayable. I mean, he couldn't even see the field last year. So I don't know. Um, that's the draft lottery. One thing that I think we we both agree on is I think that the NBA's rule that you can go pro one year after high school. I think that's a good rule, and I think that should apply to the NFL. Um, maybe not one year necessarily. That's two years, but I think this this three year crap where you have to play in college for three years. I think it's just dumb. Um, I think a lot of guys can play in the NFL after year two in, in the in college. We gave the example. Uh, Marvin Harrison would have been a great player out of his sophomore year of college. And again, not every player, but not every player goes pro after their junior year in college either. So yeah. if you are good enough and you and your agent talk about it, make that decision, jump to the NFL. I don't think you should be limited to have to play three years in college. The NBA, you have to play one year. Well, you don't have to play in college, but you have to have one year post high school what um, about uh, just throwing something out there let's say you know you've played one year um, or two years or whatever what if there was a rule where like you could be draft? it was more like the mlb right because the mlb you don't apply for the draft right um i think like, you like put your name in but I mean, yeah like, like, you, you still stay in high school or college because a lot of teams what happens is you get drafted, get drafted then they go to college yeah or, or like you're committed to play college, and the NMLB team will be like, we'll pay you more to come play for us than to go to Florida or Vanderbilt yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Like, what if a team could just be like, you, know, you put your name in, hey, I'm interested in going to the NFL. Not right. as in terms of I'm giving up my college eligibility, but if you get drafted round one, then you're able to go pro. Right. So it could be something where like Marvin Harrison is good enough. So it couldn't, it wouldn't screw people over. Because yeah. I think something that screws people over in the NBA is the one and done, right? Guys yeah. go one year in college, then they're like, I'm done. I got to go pro. They get drafted in the second round, and they kind of get screwed because they yeah. can't continue, you know, developing their game. If in the if in football, 
what if you could play uh, two years or whatever, a year, two years, and you'd be like, hey, I'm interested in going. If someone drafts me round one, I'll go pro. If no one drafts me, that's fine. I'll go play my third year. Um, and, you know, maybe maybe you don't ever end up being a first-round pick, but you at least have that option. So there are those guys that are quarterbacks or, you know, certain players that, you know, again, it wouldn't be very many. It would be like maybe one guy a year that is clearly going to be a first-round pick, like, like Bijan. A year ago, yeah. would have been a first round pick. Exactly. Um, yeah. Caleb Williams right now would have been a first round. Would pick. have been would have been the first overall pick probably. I would even say Caleb Williams and Drake May would have been first round picks this draft. Yeah. Yeah. Like allowing them to just be like, hey, you know, if you want to draft me in the first round, I'll you know I'll come and play. But if I'm not drafting the first round, I can't go to the NFL. Yeah. I have to return to college or something like that to allow so they don't, they don't get screwed out of being able to play college football. And, like, some some MLB guys, what they'll do is they'll get drafted in the seventh round, right? I know this happened yeah. with Nico Horner. I'm going to say – I'm going to make up a number. I think he got drafted in, like, the eighth round. Yeah. Played a year at Stanford, was awesome. Then the Cubs took him in the first round of the next year's draft. So, it's like, okay, he stayed here at college, drastically improved his draft stock, you know, mm-hmm. made a lot more on his signing bonus, everything like that. So, um, shout out to Nico Horner, by the way, MLB's best second baseman. Uh, we're not going to get into that, though. But – I think that would be a great idea. And then I think one thing, the final thing that we're going to talk about that the NBA does, I think better than any sports league in the world, is they promote their superstars. The NFL doesn't have as big of a problem with this as like baseball does, but I think that they're lacking in this department as well. The NBA gets posted. Anyth- anytime a player breathes, the, the ESPN's posting it, Bleacher Report's posting it, uh, Sports Center's posting it. All of these things are posting it. They're talking about these guys, what they're doing, where they're going on vacation, yada, yada, everything. Everything they're talking about. They have – all of these guys have signature shoes. They have clothing brands. They have this. They have, the NBA superstar – if you're an NBA, like, superstar player, you're a household celebrity. I mean, you just are. Um, and I think the NFL can do a much better job of promoting their stars to the world and showcasing the uh, human side of their stars like the NBA does. Yeah, I think um, I think people watch not for the team but for the player in the NBA, mm-hmm. and I think there are some players where people should watch just to watch that player. Maybe the team sucks, right? Yeah, but hey, maybe you should go watch this player. And you know, like, I mean, trying to think of an NBA team, right? Like a team that didn't make the playoffs this year. Like I think OKC didn't make the playoffs, right? So it's like Shea Gilgis Alexander. People are like watching SGA. Yeah. Whereas other teams, you know, people aren't, people weren't watching the Nuggets. No. Nuggets are in the NBA finals right now. <laughs> people didn't know that Nikola Jokic is unreal. Yeah. Because they just didn't want to watch him. Yeah. And in the NFL, how often, right? Like the Chicago Bears, Fields. Bro, nobody, Fields. Fields is a yeah. perfect example of like people just don't know. And you see it on these talk shows that they clearly don't know what they're talking about. And they like, kept me watching Bears up. games for the, all, I mean, I watched, he's what made it like doable for the whole year. Exactly. So I don't know, but I think that's some of the things that the NFL can do as good as the NBA does. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and wrap up this episode. Makana, thank you for joining. Thank you for coming on. Um, I love it when you are joining my show with me, you know, I'm always a, a, a fun, it's always a fun time with the two of us. I look forward to doing more videos with you soon. Maybe very soon. Wink, 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 wink. Um, but uh, I will see you later. Thanks for coming on and have a good rest of your day, man. And thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Peace out.